Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at a watch from Longines with their Longines flagship. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com as an authorized dealer. So in this video, deep dive in this timepiece, final points of consideration at the end, but also throughout the video, if you have further questions or if you wanna buy the watch, check out the link in the description to the product page down below. So guys, without further ado, let's jump into the video and take a closer look at this watch. Originally founded in 1832, Longines' rich history as a Swiss manufacturer is hardly rivaled even by the greatest of names, developing countless innovations, including the first dual pusher flyback chronograph, the first wristwatch to indicate two time zones, and many other firsts in the world of watchmaking. Thanks to their vast historical collection, which you can learn more about in the video, we'll link in the description down below where I visited their museum and headquarters, they're able to use genuine vintage inspiration to influence their modern designs. This approach of presenting the past in a modern creation is specifically true of the Longines flagship heritage. A watch borrowing both a name and a design approach from its original launch in 1957, which garnered popularity with both men and women. Revived in 2017, the flagship heritage is available in either a creamy off-white or black dial and offers a faithfully classic dress watch design priced under $2,000. And today we'll be looking at the black dial specifically, a watch that is actually a member of my personal collection. Beginning our detailed breakdown of this watch, we have a classically round shaped, fully polished case measuring in at a diameter of 38.5 millimeters, a thickness of 10.3 millimeters, and a lug to lug of 46.9 millimeters. While some Longines models in the past had their criticism of long lugs, the flagship is fairly restrained in its dimensions, making it a viable option for a large assortment of wrists. Sitting between 19 millimeter lugs, we have a genuine alligator top grain leather strap with accented stitching, which tapers slightly to its steel pin buckle. As a result of the dressier design language, the flagship comes with a push-pull crown, enabling for a conventional 30 meters of water resistance consistent with other models in the dress watch genre. A quick point of criticism here is the watch's sapphire crystal, where Longines has opted to add several layers of anti-reflective coating only to its underside, allowing for quite a bit of glare when looking at it with direct light. And this is really more of an issue with the black dial in comparison to the creamy off-white dial that you'll have as another option here. Looking through the sapphire crystal, we have an elegant dial bolstered by an inky black high gloss backdrop affixed with rose gold tone slim hour indices and a printed minute track encircling the remaining notable elements. At its center are dolphin style hands with a strip of superluminova traversing their center facet, which may not lend to much nighttime visibility, but offers another callback to early examples of the original watch. The Longines logo, including their applied wing hourglass, sits above automatic text at 12, while being oppositely opposed by the flagship collection name and cursive script towards the bottom of the dial. A date aperture with a contrasted printed frame and color match date wheel rests just beneath the partial crosshair running seconds. And one thing I think is interesting about this watch and might be a polarizing point for some is the sub seconds hand does break up the plane of the date window when passing through the lower portion of its track. Flipping the watch over, we have a stainless steel screw down case back adorned with what might be the most distinguished element of this watch's design in its medallion. It's a detailed gold 17th century merchant ship that sits center stage surrounded by blue enamel, which offers a liquid-like visual effect. It makes this one of the cool points about this watch when you flip it around. Now inside this watch, we have a caliber known as the L615, which offers that running 60 seconds configuration and the date at six o'clock, utilizing base architecture of the 2895-2. Now Longines is very much known for producing their own proprietary calibers and having access to Eta parts. In this instance, it does shift away from that conventional norm. Now the 2890 series is going to be a thinner, more refined option compared to that of the 2824, for example, and those family of calibers. Of that 2890 series, a couple points to bring up. They're typically going to be of higher finishing grade and also are going to get a nice little bump in the power reserve. For this movement, you have a central rotor for automatic winding, 50 hours of power reserve, and a beat rate of four hertz, 28,800 vibrations per hour, which is different than the conventional beat frequency you'll find with many modern Longine movements, which will operate at 3.5 hertz. And it does feature hacking and hand winding, all while providing that upside of the reliability you would come and expect from an Eta caliber. 
And just to provide some anecdotal evidence for this example in the arena of accuracy, it was running at minus three to plus five seconds a day on average when looking across those five different positions. So now let's unpack talking a little bit more about this flagship model. So as an owner of this watch, talk about the cons first and then we'll shift into some of the pros. Uh, just two that really stick out to me. One is just the anti-reflective uh, coating on this crystal. Given the black dial at certain angles, it can create some harsh reflections. I'm also maybe a tad bit spoiled given some of the other watches I have from Longines that have very good AR coating. For example, the Longines Sector Dial as an example, which is of this genre of dress watch. Not a big deal for some, but as somebody who likes to take pictures of their watches, uh, probably more of a big deal for me than others. Does not really impact legibility to any degree, just more of a pet peeve of mine. Then the other thing I will mention, which I think is the main con for this watch, is it does have more of a stock movement, very reliable movement, solid movement, uh, but not as long in the power reserve. You're talking about 50 hours here compared to the conventional that you might see for Longines for a little bit more money oftentimes coming with 70 hours of power reserve, also getting a COSC certification in many instances, and some of the up tech with SI hair springs and all of the sorts. So that is probably the biggest con that I'd mention here. If you spend a little bit more money, you start to get access to more of that up tech with their movements and uh, what is more seen as proprietary or in-house. Then shifting over to the pros, and there's a reason why I like this watch. And I think for one, it has strong heritage, in very unique, ornate design. I love the layout of the handset, the markers. It feels very much as if it was pulled from another era, but still is reflected in a case and a style that feels modern when you have it in your hands or on wrist. Very clean and symmetrical design across the board, even though it does include a date, I think it's nicely integrated here. The design of the case back is quite nice, and you're getting a wearable case size as well. At 38 and a half millimeters, relatively thin on wrist. Lug to lug is a tad bit longer, but still going to wear relatively true to size. And all in all, this watch just delivers in terms of just giving a no-nonsense, classic, timeless-looking dress watch for under $2,000. All right, guys, thank you again so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. That does help out the channel. Also, if you are in the market for this watch, it is available on teddybaldesser.com. We're an authorized dealer for all the brands that we carry, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factor warranty for all the products that we offer. And how we're able to fund all of our productions, not through the brands paying us to make the content, it is through selling watches on our site. So if you are in the market for a watch, we would absolutely love to have your business. I know you can buy a watch pretty much anywhere nowadays, uh, but it allows us to keep doing what we're doing. And we love what we do. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.